Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer and this is Walk Time Blog number 27, Electronics Design as an Online Team Sport with Upverter. A couple of days ago, Upverter did a really important new software release, at least I think it's important, and it's probably going to have quite a big effect on the maker community and electronics design in general, but um, maybe that's just being a bit hyperbolic. Anyway, if you haven't heard of it, Upverter.com is an online electronic design package. The objective is to take on uh, systems like Eagle and um, KiCad and Altium and all of those sorts of things and the higher end packages and have an um, electronics design package that lets you do schematic and PCB layout in your browser. Now, it's been a bit of a joke for a long time that eventually all software will be running in the browser and all our operating system will do is launch a browser and then everything else happens in tabs. And um, a lot of people have said, no, it's never going to go that way. There are certain things that you have to do on your local machine. Um, and it's really interesting to see something like electronic design moving into the browser and to see what limitations it has trying to develop a piece of software like that within a browser environment. But also the, some of the interesting things that it lets you do that you can't do in a traditional package. And this is one of those situations where um, a new way of doing things may have limitations compared to the existing systems but it brings some totally new advantage that the old systems just can't compete with or they can't compete with very effectively because they're just not geared up for it and the killer for Upverter is live online collaboration and this looks really cool I haven't tried it with anybody else yet but the general principle is that Upverter intends to be a bit like GitHub or Google Docs for electronics design. And so you create a project and you log in. It's like creating a doc in Google Docs. You can start laying out your schematic. And anyone that you share your design with can log into that same schematic at the same time and see the changes that you're making. And they can make changes themselves. And you see the changes they make. So you can have a couple of engineers collaborating on a design and you don't have to do things like have one person work on a design for a couple of hours and then zip it up and email it to the other one and open it in their package. So it totally changes things. It means you can sit there and you can also do design reviews live online. So you could have someone on Skype and talk them through your schematic while they're looking at it live and making changes. Or you could be working in different parts of the schematic at the same time. Now that may not have a huge advantage for a lot of people. The fact is that electronics design is usually a bit of a solo thing. Most of the time you have one person, one engineer sitting down doing the layout, even if they're taking input from different people. Um, but I think part of that is, um, is habit. It's partly the, you know, the psychology of the way you go about working on these sorts of things, and probably partly a lack of tools as well. So now that tools are being developed, things like Upverter, that allow you to work in that way, it'll be really interesting to see if anybody does start doing this. Um, personally, I love Google Docs for its collaborative nature, and I think that Upverter has the potential to do that same sort of thing. Now, Upverter has been around for a little while. I think it started about 18 months ago it was their first release. Um, about two years ago or so, the company was formed in Canada. Um, but... When the first release came out, it was schematic only. There was no PCB layout. So I had a bit of a look at it, it looked interesting, and I kind of discounted it because the workflow it would have required is to use Upverter to create the schematic and then um, export the netlist and then pull it into some other package to do the PCB layout. And by the time you've done that, you might as well just do it all in the other package. Uh, but now, with a couple of days ago, with the release of their PCB layout tool, it means you can go from Concept to Gerber's all in the one package. So, um, there are a couple of interesting things about it that I noticed. One is the way you can create new parts. Now, in um, well, something that's been mentioned a number of times on the Ampower podcast with Dave and Chris is the folly of companies that have been trying to set up single centralized online parts repositories. You know, the idea that you'll have a library of parts that everybody shares and you all work on, you all use. And um, the point that Dave makes is that you never trust people's parts. Like in most companies, 
um, or most engineers, they will end up creating their own parts, even if they start from something that might have come from a library. Um, and he said that some companies even have the policy that you never use anybody else's parts, you have to create all of your own. Now, one of the interesting things about Upverter is the way the parts management works. Because it's all online, it works on the principle that everything is shared. So you can create a part and then anybody else can use it. And you can fork the part as well. So you don't have to use the part as they created it. You can use someone else's part as a starting point. Now, there's no friction to this within Upverter, which is the interesting thing. If you're doing the same thing in, say, Eagle, what you do is you create the part locally and then you have to share it. So you would publish your library or your part or whatever online or on GitHub or wherever. And then someone else has to download it and then they make their changes to it. And it's not easy for you to see what changes they've made. With Upverter, it all happens right within the tool and it's live, real time. So if you want to place a new part in your schematic, you do a part search and among all of the parts that come up, are parts created by other users. You can just select one, use it as is, or you can select it and then fork it and modify it and use it yourself. And it's as easy as if it was already installed on your local machine. So it'll be interesting once again to see if that change in tools changes the behavior of people. I don't know whether it will, but it'll be very interesting to watch what happens over the next little while as uh, people start using Upverter. Um, there are some other interesting things about the part creation tool. Um, one is that it links to Octopart. So if you do a search, a couple of nights ago um, when this new release came out, I um, started doing a little sample project and I wanted to put down an RJ12 connector. So I did a search for an RJ12 part. There was nothing on um, Upverter. So it then offered to search on Octopart and it came up with, I think, about a dozen different parts listed on Octopart. And from any one of those, you just click a button to take the definition from Octopart, pull it in and create a part within Upverter. And it basically pre-populates the part for you. It generates a link to the data sheet within the part definition and all sorts of interesting things. So it takes the initial research work of trying to find a part and then begin designing the, um, the symbol for it and it largely automates it. It just pre-populates it there right for you. And so you can go from an octopart entry to a usable part you know, within a few minutes, which is very, very cool. Um, now, one of the things when I first started, when I first saw this was I was a bit worried that I would lose a particular workflow that I particularly like. And that is that when I'm working in Eagle, uh, what I normally do on my, um, in my lab, my, the computer that I normally use for electronics design has three monitors. So what I normally do is start with the schematic on the center monitor and data sheets you know, on the sides while I'm doing the initial layout. And then once I switch to the PCB, I move the schematic across to the left, I have the PCB in the center and then data sheets on the right. And being a, I find that being able to view the PCB layout and the schematic simultaneously on the two monitors side by side is really handy. Um, I like to do things like do a, a show on a part on the PCB and see where it is in the schematic and vice versa. You know, highlight a net in the schematic and all the tracks highlight on the PCB. And so I was worried that I would lose some of that functionality um, with Upverter. But the interesting thing is because it has this multi-session support, it becomes really easy. What you do is you just have one browser window open maximized on one monitor, one maximized on the other, and you have one, and both logged in as yourself, and you have one in PCB view, one in schematic view, and it works. It's fantastic. You can add a part in the schematic view and it just appears in the PCB view, and um, so it's all seamless. That is actually really cool. I thought that was something that we would lose in a browser-based uh, system, but it actually works really well. Um, now, in terms of pricing, this is one of the interesting things about it as well. With traditional um, CAD packages, it's usually a big one-off fee. And this is the difference between the traditional uh, pay a license fee for the software in perpetuity versus pay, you know, the online subscription model or the freemium model that is used by places like GitHub. And Upverter has gone for the online freemium model. There is a free version. You don't have to pay a cent to use it. The limitation is that all of your designs are public. It's just like GitHub. You can use GitHub free 
uh, as long as everything that you put up there is published. So what you do is pay a fee for the right to have your designs uh, private, so private projects. Now the pricing is a little bit odd at the moment and I can't quite figure out what's going on here. I don't know whether they've made a mistake on their site, but the way the pricing works at the moment is there is a free package which allows you to have um, unlimited projects, but they all must be public. There is a $7 option, $7 per month that is, which gives you 100 private projects or is the $199 per month option which also gives you 100 private projects. I don't quite know what's going on there. I have a feeling that the $7 per month is actually meant to be for like five private projects or some smaller number like that, um, but we'll see. Um, and the, another thing that I find really interesting about Upverda, from purely from a business point of view, because I like looking at software startups and seeing how, um, how they can make money. Um, and the thing I find fascinating about Upverter is that they have a dual revenue opportunity here, which it looks like they are taking advantage of, or at least setting themselves up to. Firstly, they have the obvious revenue opportunity, which is license fees on subscriptions to use the software. Now, if you use the software, you can generate Gerbers, and you can export them, take them to any PCB fab house you want, and just use it like any other piece of software. But the second interesting revenue stream is they could do PCB production directly out of the system. So once you've designed your PCB in the Upverter software, it can be a one click, please make me this PCB service, pay some money and they'll ship it to you. So of course they make revenue off the PCB fabrication as well. So they're both a hardware company and a software company, which is very, very interesting model. I can't recall um, anyone quite doing it that way before. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Um, other cool things that have come out of it, one interesting little project which happened as a spin-off of Upverter is that in the early days while they were working on taking designs from other software packages and pulling them into Upverter is they wrote a little conversion utility that allows you to feed in a schematic file from any one of about a dozen different formats and it converts it to any one of the other formats, like any other of those dozen formats. And that is a little standalone, I think it's Python utility. That in itself is really interesting and is actually a very useful service. And um, once again, this is something I admire the Upverter guys for doing. What they saw was that this utility is something that's very useful for a lot of people, but it's not core to their business. It's, it's something that enables their business. Um, and so what they did was they released that free and open source as a separate utility. Obviously the Upverter system itself uses it because you can do things like import Eagle projects and um, behind the scenes it'll be using this utility. But they figured, hey, other people can use this too, so we'll just make it available. And I admire them for that. Good move. So um, I think a lot of software companies are realizing that there is a lot of mileage to be had from releasing things that they build as utilities or things that are non-core business. And um, it helps other people, it gives them respect and exposure within the industry. So um, I suspect that a few people will end up using that conversion utility just for their own purposes. Like they'll search for convert from Eagle to Altium or you know something like that and find this utility, use it, think it's cool. They'll be exposed to Upverter and maybe Upverter will get some more customers. It's, um, it's basically good marketing for them. So overall, I think Upverter is really interesting. It does have some rough edges. Um, I found a, a few little things in it that are not quite right or things that maybe just because of my preconceptions working with other tools um, doesn't seem like it should work that way. Um, but I'm going to give it a bit more of a go and um, we'll see how well it works. So check it out, upverter.com. See ya.